Hmm, when I think about the bunny run, two words come to mind. Welcome to Scripture of the Day. I am not Pastor Bobby. For those of you I haven't had the chance to meet yet, I'm Pastor Bill. I'm usually on the other end of the camera working on Scripture of the Day with Pastor Bobby. Now, Pastor Bobby has uh, taught us 141 straight chapters of the New Testament up until now, but today he wasn't feeling that good. And so we thought it'd be wise to give him the day off so that he could really rest and hopefully get ready to, to preach at our church this weekend at Compass HB. So we're giving him the day off of Scripture of the Day. So if you'd like to in the comments below, just leave him a comment telling him you hope he feels better. I'm sure that he would be encouraged by that. Now at the beginning of this video, you saw uh, Pastor Bobby expressed his enthusiasm for the bunny run. Now, this is a great time for our church family to get together. We get together in Central Park. It happens this year on Saturday, April 13th, a couple of weeks before Easter. And we've got a 5K going on that starts at 9 a.m. And that's something where you're free to, you know, try to really run and set your new personal record. Or if you want to run it by running with your dog or strolling with your kids in the stroller, there's really no limit to what you want to do in that 5K. And then afterwards, we eat breakfast together and it's awesome, right? It's a great time. And then after that at 11 in the morning, we've got a, a character chase for the kids where they, they chase some of those new characters that you saw in this video. And then they get to get Easter eggs with candy in them. It's a great time for the whole family. We hope if you're in town that you'll be able to join us. Uh, but as we think about running, that brings us to today's chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And I hope that you've read the chapter before you're watching this video. You're going to read it right after this. But this is the chapter where we get this well-known statement from the Apostle Paul where he says in verse 24, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Now in this chapter, Paul is going to talk a lot about the way he thinks about his own life. And we saw at the end of chapter 8 that Paul kind of concluded this discussion about uh, you know, if food being offered to idols, eating that, eating that kind of meat is going to cause my brother to stumble. I will never eat meat again. And, and Paul is really laying out uh, his own example to the Corinthian church about how Paul was not really about himself. It wasn't about Paul and his rights and focusing on what he wanted. The way he thought about his life is how can I sacrifice my own self, my own desires, my own rights even for the good of other people. And as he jumps into it in chapter 9, he asks a bunch of questions. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not my workmanship in the Lord? And, and apparently, you know, uh, Paul, as he's interacted with the Corinthian church, he made the conscious decision not to try to get any kind of salary, not to try to get any kind of financial support from the Corinthian church. And, and that wasn't because he didn't have an expectation of this. I mean, 
I mean, he said, you know, in verse 7, who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard without eating any of its fruit? Who tends a flock without getting some of the milk? And he even refers to the Old Testament after that. A great verse of all time, don't muzzle the ox while it's threshing, right? I mean, he's basically saying that as you work uh, for the Lord in terms of sharing the gospel, of of really planting a church, of pastoring a church, that it, it just seems like that's a, a worthwhile investment, that even it, it would make sense for the Corinthian church to have supported Paul in that ministry because it's so important, because it's so valuable what was going on. But Paul says a couple of different times, if you look down in verse verse 12, he says, Nevertheless, we have not made use of this right, but we endure anything rather than put an obstacle in the way of the gospel of Christ. And so Paul uh, apparently knew that him asking for a salary or him asking for some kind of financial contribution, that that might have made people confused, that that might have you know, caused people to think more about Paul and what he was doing rather than the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so even Paul says, hey, that seems like it would be uh, a reasonable expectation that he would have from the Corinthian church. He was gladly willing to sacrifice that for that good. And he says, he says this in verse 19, for though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win more of them. And Paul really goes into this detailed account of how he thinks, and really he has a very focused goal that he wants to see people won over to the gospel of Jesus Christ. He wants more people to, to turn from their sin and put their faith in Jesus Christ. And that is driving, that is the focus that is driving Paul in everything he does. And he says, hey, even if I have to give up my rights, that's what I'm willing to do so that more people will come to Jesus Christ. And really, Paul here is just giving us an example that he's following himself, right? That he's following the example of Jesus Christ. I mean, a key passage that we'll get to later in the New Testament is Paul writes to the church in Philippi, in Philippians. I mean, you could look up Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8, where you know, it really Paul commands us that we should have the same mindset about ourselves that Jesus Christ had about himself. That if you want to talk about anyone who had rights, anyone who had expectations, here's Jesus Christ glorified with the Father from all of eternity in heaven, but yet he doesn't count it. That is something to be held on to, to be grasped. He's willing to empty himself and take on the form of a servant so that he could save us from our sins. And so here's an example of, of Paul really laying out his example in hopes that the, the Corinthians will start thinking about willingly giving up their own rights for the good of other people. And this is Paul expressing his example of how he's done that as he's following Christ himself. And he says this in verse, uh, in verse 22, I have become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. And so, I mean, the, the way that Paul was willing to give up his own rights, he was very strategic. He was very focused on, I want to do everything I can to see people one to Christ. And he uses this analogy of, of a runner. In verse 25, he says, every athlete exercises self-control in all things. And I don't know if you've ever watched a race where people are really running. They're really going for it. I mean, it gets intense, right? Like I feel like watching those things is like a sport. I feel like I've exercised as I even watch those things. I mean, when you watch the Olympics and those sprinters are going for it and they slow it down into the slow-mo and you get the high def of how like every muscle in their body is straining and you got like the background stories about how their shoes only weigh like a certain number of ounces because they've been so specifically designed to be strong yet not to weigh a lot so that these guys can run as fast as humanly possible down the track. I mean, these people, like, they're thinking, I don't want anything slowing me down. I don't want anything holding me back from my goal. And that's the way that Paul encourages us to think about our lives, that we should be running it so that we can obtain the prize. 
And that's something for us to consider here today on Scripture of the Day. Are, is the way that you and I are living our lives, could we really be said that we're giving up things that are our rights, that we're sacrificing our own desires, our own wants, so that more people could be saved? I mean, what's the aim of your life? What are you really going for? What are you willing to sacrifice towards? I mean, Paul had the, the best of all goals, that he wanted to see more people come to know Jesus Christ. And so probably it would be helpful for us to take stock of our lives in response to this chapter and think, hey, am I, am I really thinking about people getting saved? I mean, you could tell Paul was like, here's something I'm gladly willing to give up to see people get saved. Here is this strategy that I have to really engage this specific group of people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like, it's not about me and the way that I would like to live my life. It's about how can I live my life so that I can really help these people understand the gospel and put their trust in Jesus Christ. I mean, we would do well to imitate Paul's example here that we would not just be running aimlessly now in the bunny run we're going to see some people really going for it we're going to see some of us that we're just out there for a little stroll but paul does not want us to have a bunny run mentality with our with our life he wants us to be running to win and so in your life think about hey how am i really running to see souls get saved hey, there's no greater joy than to see other people come to know Jesus Christ. And, and if we could get to share that with them, if God would be so pleased to use us, what a joy, what a prize that would be, that would be so worth running to obtain. And he says in verse 27, but I discipline my body and I keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Where he's even starting to lead into what he's gonna talk about in chapter 10 that we all need to keep not just a close watch on what we're saying to other people, but on our own lives so that we don't get disqualified. So I, I hope that this has been an encouragement to you. I hope that this has been an encouragement to take a look at your life and to see that running for souls is really worth running for. And I hope that you'll keep running. I hope that you'll join us at the Bunny Run so we can take a 5K together. And I hope to see you for more here on Scripture of the Day.